Heels started with men, absolutely. How can we forget that? This exhibit is titled Standing Tall, The Curious History of Men in Heels. The heels are so feminine, but they didn't start that way. No, they really didn't. I've dated the origin of the heel as far back as the 10th century in Persia, where they seem to have been invented to keep the foot in the stirrup. And that what that did was it allowed men on horseback to wield heavier weaponry, to be more successful at warfare. And so they really were a military tool, an equestrian tool, and they eventually became of interest to Europeans because of those qualities. This is a stacked leather heel, and he's wearing a riding boot. And so this heel was being worn as a way of proclaiming his masculinity. He's been out horseback riding, but this is also King Louis XIII. And so he's also an icon of fashion. And one of the things that I'm interested in is looking at different time periods in which men have worn heels, not to appear feminine, but instead to appear very masculine. And I would argue that Gene Simmons is perhaps inspired by Louis XIII. Their outfits are almost identical. And in fact, they're both proclaiming uh, sort of the privilege of masculine appeal and identity in part through the footwear that they sport. So I think the whole power factor of heels matters. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the most famous people associated with men in heels, of course, is Louis XIV, probably the most powerful person, at least in the European world. And he sported very high, very red heels. But it wasn't because he was too short or it was, had nothing to do with femininity. It was because it was an expression of power. I always think that heels are the ultimate in femininity. I know, but it's interesting because they really were functional. This is why cowboys wear them today. And what I find most interesting though about cowboy boots is that they tend to be really decorative. And so here are men whose masculinity is unassailable and they actually take more fashion risks, often at the footwear level. We have the icon of femininity is the high heel. And one of the icons of masculinity is the cowboy boot. Both are heeled and yet somehow we only talk about heels in relation to women. And I see over here, there's, I guess it's from different times, we can see how that idea has changed significantly. Yeah, a high point of heel wearing is of course the 1970s. You see men wearing the highest heels ever. That's right. But they're not really feminine high heels. They're not thin and sinuous. They're mm -hmm. not borrowing from Marilyn Monroe's closet. They're looking back to what was worn in the 17th century. And so men began to try new fashions, but those fashions always had masculine uh, origins. So we're down in the basement now. We are, so I'm taking you to artifact storage. This is some place that the visitor cannot come, so oh. it's a special treat. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> and it's also where we have a lot of the women's high heels that you would like to see. All right, what do we have here? Oh my goodness. This is like a wonderland. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So do you, how many shoes do you have in here? We have about 13,000. 13,000. Yeah. So. Mostly heels. Well, in Western fashion, you know, heels for women become definitive. The oldest shoe we have is 4,500 years old. The most recent is a pair of sneakers. And we have shoes from across the globe and throughout time. My favorite pairs of high heels uh, is this. It's Swedish. Oh, wow. Oh, that's Those quite lovely. Beautiful. And it dates to the late 20s and really quite high. And what, the other thing too that I love about it is that people will say women wear high heels to make their breasts and their buttocks mm -hmm. stand I've heard it sort of out. leans them forward. So. But this is the 1920s when women were ramrod straight, when they bound their breasts and they tried to look boyish and yet they still wore high heels. So how mm -hmm. we even stand in high heels is I think culturally mandated. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah, they're exquisite. I 
think it's interesting though that heels started with men, but you said there's a certain kind of heel they never wore. Yeah, so when you look at men wearing heels throughout history, they tend to have favored big blocky heels like you see here, like you see here with Elton John's, but they never went towards the very narrow, sinuous heel like the stiletto. That is still sort of new territory for men if they ever decide to walk down that uh, path. <laughs> Do you think it's possible? <laughs> you know, I'm interested because oftentimes, particularly at the beginning of the 2000s, uh, women's stilettos were often talked in terms of female power. And power should be an ungendered thing. And so if high heels become a symbol of actual power, then why wouldn't men be as interested in wearing stilettos as a woman? What's the reaction that you hear from people? Yeah, a lot of people don't know this history, which is why I think it was great to be able to do the exhibition. And I do find it interesting given that the 70s wasn't that long ago. And so what it seems to prove to me is that we normalize or naturalize things very, very quickly. And that we begin to assign meanings to things like the heel that we think have always been there when the heel is just a thing that we give cultural meaning to. And that completely changes decade by decade.